Esther chapter 1 Now in the days of Ahasuerus, the Ahasuerus who reigned from India to Ethiopia over 127 provinces, in those days when King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne in Susa, the citadel, in the third year of his reign, he gave a feast for all his officials and servants, the army of Persia and Medina, and all the nobles and governors of the provinces were before him, while he showed the riches of his royal glory and the splendor and pomp of his greatness for many days, a hundred eighty days. And when these days were completed, the king gave for all the people present in Susa the citadel, both great and small, a feast lasting for seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white cotton curtains and violet hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rods and marble pillars, and also couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and precious stones. Drinks were served in golden vessels, vessels of different kinds, and the royal wine was lavished according to the bounty of the king and drinking was according to this edict, there is no compulsion. For the king had given orders to all the staff of his palace to do as each man desired. Queen Vashti also gave a feast for the women in the palace that belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahuma, Bistha, Harbana, Bigtha and Abagtha, Zethar and Carcass, the seven eunuchs who served in the presence of King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti before the king with her royal crown, in order to show the peoples and the princes her beauty, for she was lovely to look at. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command delivered by the eunuchs. At this, the king became enraged, and his anger burned within him since it was customary for the king to consult experts in matters of law and justice. He spoke with the wise men who understood the times and were closest to the king. Karshana, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Miris, Marsena, and Mamukan, the seven nobles of Persia and Media, who had special access to the king and were highest in the kingdom. According to the law, what must be done to Queen Vashti? He asked. She has not obeyed the command of King Xerxes that the eunuchs have taken to her. Then Mamukan replied in the presence of the king and the nobles, Queen Vashti has done wrong, not only against the king, but also against all the nobles and the peoples of all the provinces of King Xerxes. For the queen's conduct will become known to all the women and so they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she would not come. This very day, the Persian and Median women of the nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. Therefore, if it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree, and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Media, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is never again to enter the presence of King Xerxes. Also, let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all his vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands from the least to the greatest. The king and his nobles were pleased with this advice, so the king did as Memukan proposed. He sent dispatches to all parts of the kingdom, to each province in its own script, and to each people in their own language, proclaiming that every man should be ruler over his household, using his native tongue. Chapter 2 After these things, when the anger of King Ahasuerus had subsided, he remembered Vashti, and what she had done, and what had been decided regarding her. Then the king's attendants, who served him, said, Let beautiful young virgins be sought for the king. 
and may the king appoint overseers in all the provinces of his kingdom, and have them bring every beautiful young virgin to the citadel of Susa, to the harem, into the custody of Hegai, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of the women, and let their cosmetics be given to them. Then let the young woman who pleases the king be queen in the place of Vashti. And the suggestion pleased the king, and he did accordingly. There was a Jew at the citadel in Susa, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shimel, the son of Kish, a Benjaminite, who had been taken from Jerusalem with the exiles who had been deported with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had deported. He was the guardian to Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had no father or mother. Now the young woman was beautiful of form and face, and when her father and her mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. So it came about, when the command and decree of the king were heard, and many young ladies were gathered to the citadel of Susa into the custody of Haggai, that Esther was taken to the king's palace into the custody of Haggai, who was in charge of the woman. Now the young lady pleased him and found favor with him, so he quickly provided her with her cosmetics and food, gave her seven choice female attendants from the king's palace, and transferred her and her attendants to the best place in the harem. Esther did not reveal her people or her kindred, because Mordecai had instructed her that she was not to reveal them. And every day, Mordecai walked back and forth in front of the courtyard of the harem to learn how Esther was and what was happening to her. Now when the turn came for each young woman to go in to King Ahasuerus, after the end of her twelve months under the regulations for the women, for the days of their beauty treatment were completed as follows, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with balsam oil, and the cosmetics for women. The young woman would go into the king this way. Anything that she desired was given her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening, she would enter, and in the morning, she would return to the second harem, to the custody of Shazgaz, the king's eunuch who was in charge of the concubines. She would not go into the king again unless the king delighted in her, and she was summoned by name. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter, came to go into the king, she did not request anything except what Haggai, the king's eunuch who was in charge of the women, advised. And Esther was finding favor in the eyes of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus in his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month to Beth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther more than any of the other young women. He was so delighted with her that he set the royal crown on her head and declared her queen instead of Vashti. To celebrate the occasion, he gave a great banquet in Esther's honor for all his nobles and officials, declaring a public holiday for the provinces and giving generous gifts to everyone. Even after all the young women had been transferred to the second harem and Mordecai had become a palace official, Esther continued to keep her family background and nationality a secret. She was still following Mordecai's directions, just as she did when she lived in his home. Thanks for watching, and we want to hear from you. Check the pinned comment below. Join us every morning from Monday to Saturday to watch along with the whole community. Then on Sunday night, come on back for a weekly sleep video. Also, you can check us out on Spotify, linked down below. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow for your daily dose of Bible.